I believe this series is designed to perfect and develop our ability as believers to master the art and responsibility of forgiveness. I want to talk to you today as mature believers, people who understand that you have been bought with a price, right? Your sins have been washed clean, and you are a new creature in Christ. Any, any new creatures in the building? I want to talk to you as a kingdom citizen uh, uh, who, who you're being trained and developed to go out and reach the world for Jesus Christ. So this is a training class, okay? All right? I want to tell you that you are born for greatness. You you are born to do great things. You are agents of change. You are the king's kids. You are called for a great purpose. You are called to do more. You are called to be more. And it's time for us to move into maturity. Anybody ready to grow up? All right. It is time for us to be moved by the things that move God. Our days of being solely led by our feelings and uh, uh, reacting to all, all the time to what people do to us and how they treat us and all that stuff, those days are over. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Oftentimes we talk about forgiveness in the context of what has been done to us. Um, there maybe was an egregious act or a personal attack and, and that has caused us to have anger towards someone or, or feel a certain kind of way about people. You know how we do. Um, but I think that these offenses, uh, even though they're hurtful and um, can, uh, 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 and they come from people that are close to us, because it's hard for people that are, you know, that we don't interact with to really, you know, offend us and hurt us. They really tend to come from people that we're in relationship with. Wouldn't you agree? People that we we've had fellowship with and that, that we've talked to and, and been connected to. David said it like this in Psalm 55. He said, uh, "For it was not my enemies that reproached me, because I could have took that." You know, neither was it he that hated me that did magnify him, uh, himself against me because I could have hid from him. But it was you, my brother, my man, my equal. It's you, the one that I went to church with. Come on, somebody. The one that I went to the club with, the one that I hung out with, the one that I married. Come on, the one that we grew up together. It was you. It was you that, that, did, that did this to me. It was you uh, that, uh, uh, that offended. We took sweet counsel together. We hung out together. And it's the, those are the people that we are finding ourselves that we have to forgive. Those are the people that we're finding ourselves that those are the people we have to interact with. You know, we're having to forgive our loved ones, our children, come on, our cousin them and that uncle or, or that daddy or whatever, people close to us. Right up, up until this point, we've been talking about forgiveness in the context of people that we're in relationship with. But I want to submit this to you. Perhaps God has allowed these things in our lives as training tools. Uh, sensitivity training because perhaps uh, if you hadn't have gone through what you went through uh, you wouldn't care about nobody but yourself um, um, uh, perhaps uh, if, if, if you hadn't been offended and you had been stabbed in the back uh, if you hadn't been treated like that uh, you wouldn't care what other people have been offended uh, and stabbed in the back but maybe God allowed these things in your life uh, so that you could care about other people I think it's a test, and I think the more that you go through, the faster God wants you to get over it. I think the more that he brings your way and the more people that you interact with, you got you to gotta move, move through a fence very quickly. You can't afford to hold on to things in this season. You got to let stuff go real fast because God is training you for something greater and something better. You're with me here today. I like this. Um, um, it kind of reminds me of when Peter was getting ready to mess up. And Jesus said uh, to Peter, he said, uh, 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 Peter, uh, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as weak. But I have prayed for you by faith that, that your faith won't fail you. And when you are converted, strengthen your brother. Two things happen here. Jesus said the devil wants to have you. I'm not going to stop his plan concerning you, but I'm going to stand over here and pray and watch you go through it. Because you need this test, Peter. You kind of stuck up, Peter. You kind of churchy, Peter. You kind of don't care 
care about folk, Peter. So I need you to go through this season in your life. Hallelujah, where you're humbled. Hallelujah, where you're not who you think you are. I need you to go through this season where you, you deny me three times and the clock crows. I need you to go through this season because I've got something for you on the other side. But here's what I'll do. I'll pray for you that your faith is filled you not. And then here's the second clue. And when, because you are coming out of this, and when you are converted, I need you to strengthen somebody else. Nothing that you've gone through has taken God by surprise. As a matter of fact, I'm here to tell you that he let you go through it. He let folk hurt your feelings. He let them walk out. He allowed it. But he's been over here interceding for you, saying, I know she's going to come out of this. I know she ain't going to act a fool. I put too much in her. I put too much in him. He ain't going to go over there and act like he ain't lost his mind. And when he comes out of this, he's going to strengthen somebody else. This is a sign of maturity. When we begin to see the things that happen in our life uh, are just tools to make us better. <laughs> Hallelujah. At some point, uh, you got to stop being the victim uh, and start being the victor. Uh, yes, stuff is going to happen. Uh, life happens to everybody. Uh, Hallelujah. There's not a person in here that hadn't been through something. Uh, we, uh, you, uh, me, we're not the only ones. Uh, but I came to let you know today uh, that there is a when you are converted coming. Uh, there's a time when you're going to come out of this. Hallelujah. All we need you to do is learn the lesson. Ooh, I feel right preachery through here. But I said earlier, I said, uh, I said, I, I pray, I believe that God wants us to be moved by the things that move him. So when we're in, on this forgiveness journey, and we're, we're learning how not only to be the forgivee, but to be the forgiver. Hallelujah. Some of us, we're comfortable with receiving forgiveness. But the trend, the, 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 the sign of maturity is when you're offering forgiveness. Hallelujah. We are conduits of forgiveness. God wants us to be, hallelujah, his, 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 his ambassadors of forgiveness. It's not for us to be judgmental. It's not for us to look down on people because such was some of us. If I told you the truth, hallelujah, I've been forgiven much. So it's easy to forgive because I remember when I was in the same mess. I remember when I was, I'm sorry, I know you, I know that I need to, I'm teaching. This is really teaching. I promise. I'm just yelling. But I remember in, 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 in times in my life where I, I needed God to forgive me, I was messing up all over myself. <sighs> but his grace and mercy covered me. So how dare I not be moved when I see you in a mess and I see you going through? How dare I sit back and let you fail and let you fall and talk about you and put you on Instagram and put you on Facebook? How dare I? Uh, you know how we do. We like to subtweet and talk about people without putting their name in it. You know, how, how dare I be that person? Hallelujah, because I've been there. But the Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion. Uh, 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 Matthew 20, verse 34 says, uh, um, uh, moved with compassion, Jesus touched their eyes immediately and they regained sight. He was moved to heal uh, with compassion. Um, um, seeing the people, March, uh, Matthew 9, 36, seeing the people, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dispirited and they were a sheep uh, without a shepherd. Uh, God has compassion for us uh, when we're wandering about uh, and we have no leadership uh, and we don't know what we're connected to and he has compassion we, we don't know that we're fathered and we feel like we're bastardized and we feel like don't nobody care about us God's heart goes out to us because he loves us so much he's moved that moves him can I tell you that your situation moves God hallelujah that diagnosis moves God hallelujah what you're going through it moves God he's a good father he cares about his children hallelujah hallelujah when Jesus uh, Mark 6, 34, when Jesus went ashore, he saw a large crowd and he felt compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Uh, uh, Mark, Mark 8, I feel compassion for the people because they have remained with me now three days and they ain't ate nothing. He's compassionate about your appetite. He wants to make sure you have your basic needs. Jesus did everything he did because he was moved with compassion. So today, uh, my first point is uh, that forgiveness is uh, the business of the cross. 
this is a very important week in the Christian faith. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree? Hallelujah. This Today is called Palm Sunday. And then this, this week, this holy week, we celebrate all that our Jesus did, everything he did. He died on the cross for us. He took the beating. This is the time that we call to mind all of the sacrifices that Jesus has made. And if you would go with me um, um, to Mark uh, uh, chapter 21, verse 9, and I want to Tell, talk a little bit about uh, when Jesus is getting ready to enter into, uh, he's, he's headed home and headed to the Passover and he's entering into the city and March, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 21 verse 9 says, then the multitudes who went before uh, and those who followed cried out saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Jesus had entered into the city on a donkey and everybody was excited that he was on his way. They had heard about him. Huh? He was insta famous. You know what I mean? He was, he had a million followers. You see what I'm saying? Because they had heard all that he could do. Hallelujah. He was a media, a social media sensation. He was a word of mouth kind of thing. They had been talking about him. Come on, somebody. They talked about when they, he healed the sick and he was raising the dead. He was really, really, if you read that passage, the, uh, the, the, everybody's still really going crazy about the fact that Lazarus was dead for four days and he had been raised from the dead. So Jesus, he, 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 didn't, need, he didn't need no PR committee. Come on, somebody. He didn't need nobody running his social media. He had, he had evidence uh, that he was the son of God. Uh, he was healing the sick. Uh, I remember in the scripture when uh, John sent his disciples to Jesus and said, are you the one or shall we look for another? And Jesus said, man, the blind do see. Uh, hallelujah. The dead do live. Uh, come on, somebody. He had evidence of who he was. Uh, he didn't have to testify of himself uh, because God did it when John baptized him uh, and put him in the water uh, and the dove ascended upon his head. And he said, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus, he was a bad man. Hallelujah. He was coming into town. And so people, they were, they started casting down their branches and their clothes so he could ride over in the middle of the city. Hallelujah. And, and, and when he came into Jerusalem, all the city was moved saying, who is this? So the multitude said, this is Jesus. Come on. That was, he, that was his PR. Hallelujah. You don't know this dude? I'm not you don't know Jesus? You're not, what? You're not, what? Where you been? You been under a rock? You know, they begin to talk about all the things that he did. So the Bible goes on to say, um, then Jesus went into the temple and drove out all those that bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Then the blind and the lame came to him. Hallelujah. I dare you to take whatever's going on in your life. Take it to him. Hallelujah. They came to him and he healed. Why? Because he was moved. Glory be to God. And he began to heal them. And so it goes on to talk about when the, the, the priest got upset with him that it was, it was getting ready to go down. Because who's like, who is this dude coming up in the church? Turning over tables and stuff. So he 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 had already worn out his welcome in just today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But this is the last time we see Jesus at the Passover. But can we talk about the first time that um, we see him at the Passover in Scripture? Um, in, in, in Luke chapter 2, verses, verse 41, he was only 12 years old at the time. And his family went to Passover every year. And he said, in verse 41 says, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the, the custom of the feast. When they had finished the days, as they return, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother uh, uh, did not know it, but supposing him to have been around somewhere, y'all know how we do, uh, they thought he was with his cousins then or something, and they, and they went a day's journey. I don't know how you do that, but they went a day's journey and sought him uh, 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 he, they, oh Lord, wait, uh, but supposing him to be having a company, and he went a day's journey and saw him among their relatives and acquaintances. So when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. Uh, now, so it was that after three days, 
They found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. So when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Yes, Lord. <laughs> so even the first time we meet him, he understands his purpose and that his purpose and his he was about the business of forgiveness. Glory be to God. Uh, um, um, I, I love that because uh, it's very interesting that he was in the temple for three days as a child. Uh, I think God prepares us even as children for what his purpose is in our lives. Hallelujah. And I think I'm really big on purpose because I think some of the stuff that we go through don't make sense <laughs> if we don't know that there is an after this. You see what I'm saying? And, and so I think Jesus knew that this, I'm, I'm, I know, Joseph, you're a good, good stepdad, and I appreciate you. Uh, but I was working on what God had for me to do. Let's talk about forgiveness. Let's go to point number two. Forgiveness is proactive and not reactive. Forgiveness is proactive and not reactive. Can I tell you that um, the word forgive, um, the first phrase is for, which means that this is, when we're talking about forgiveness, we don't have to wait for people to mess up to offer forgiveness. If we go into relationship and we go into covenant with people understanding that like us, they have the proclivity to mess up, we wouldn't be so disappointed when they do. We, we put so much expectation on flesh. And the Bible says that in flesh dwells no good thing. No good thing. Hallelujah. The Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. His love, uh, 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 pre, uh, it came before our mess up. He loved us long before we ever did anything. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 4, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight in the sin which does so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that has been set before us. Listen to this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now set on the right hand of the throne of God. Let me stop right there. Jesus looked into the future, past our mess ups, past everything that we were going to do, and he got excited that he it was going to turn around at some point. As a matter of fact, he died before we messed up. Come on, he took the bruises and he took the whippings before you, he, and un, with the understanding that you were going to mess up anyway. He took the beating with the understanding that you still going to lie a little bit, still going to cheat, come on, still going to do a little this and that. He, he understood that at the time, and he did it anyway. You know what he did? He bet on himself. He said, if I do this, hallelujah, that at some point they're going to recognize my love for them. As a matter of fact, my love was waiting for you in the mess up. Matter of fact, you had to walk through my love to do it. You had to walk through my passion for you to do what you're doing. And for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame. So Jesus dies for sins that have not yet been committed. Mm, this, that's what we got to do. Because must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. And there's a cross for you and me. We've got to learn how to be like Jesus and understand that we need to sacrifice for people that might not treat us right. We need to understand that we got to love people even when we know they're doing us wrong. Hallelujah. 
hallelujah, Judas kissed Jesus and then sold him out. You know that everybody that's kissing you is not your friend, but you got to learn how to love them anyway. God didn't expose Judas. He didn't, Jesus didn't expose Judas. And then he knew Peter was going to let him down. He said, no, buddy, you good. I already prayed for this. It's okay. I know you're going to mess this thing up, but I'm going to die for you anyway because there's power in the blood. Hallelujah. The Bible says that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. I want you to know that your sin is in remission. Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm country. Please forgive me. So I got to be honest with y'all. I got to let me calm down and talk to y'all for a minute. Y'all all all right? Everybody good? I got a confession to make. And I'm working on it. I want y'all to know I'm working on it right now. God is dealing with my heart. And this is not the worship center. It's Charmaine talking right now, okay? This, we're just going to be real. It's just me and you, all right? Y'all all right? I'm just going to talk to you. So I, I'm, 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 I'm going to admit something. I'm, I'm struggling with um, our current president. <clears throat> I no, just personally, I'm, I'm not talking about anybody else, but it, it's a personal struggle. It's deep down, brother Ed. It's deep down. It's deep down. I'm asking God to remove this thorn from all of us. <laughs> um, I mean, for me, you know, if it's this, I, I, I pray thrice, Lord. <laughs> Could you remove it? But no, no. He, uh, I said, Lord, you know, uh, yeah, help, help. Um, I'm just struggling a little bit. I mean, every day he does something. Every day. <laughs> I mean, every. Every day he says something just that offends my heart and spirit. I'm like, how could you let this man be the president? I thought you, this was your, this is one nation under God. You could have stopped this, Lord. You could have stopped this, you more powerful than the Russians, Jesus. You could have done something about it. <laughs> but that's my struggle. Ain't nobody else's struggle. It's just mine. <laughs> and um, so as Pastor was introducing this and talking um, through this particular, you know, what we were going to do in terms of the series and everything, and I, I said, well, let me go on and pray and see where I need to, you know, get it together. And you know, cause I, you know, I'm like, God, I'm good. Like, I forgive people. I'm good. Like, I get it. You know, I mean, you, you watch my sin. I get it. So he, you know, spoke to my heart about some things. And, and he said, but um, how do you feel about, the, about um, President Trump? I said, well, what does that have to do with anything? Like, really? <laughs> I mean, he's, you know, yeah, President Trump. I don't think I've ever said those two words together, but yeah. And the Lord said, you need to forgive. I said, but you know, he didn't do it to me. So, you know, I mean, this is the country's problem. I didn't vote for him. You know, I'm waiting for Obama to start something new. You know, so I, I ain't mad at him per se. You know, I mean, he's a good guy. You know, I liked him on Apprentice. I mean, really, it's all good. And um, the Lord said, no. He said, no. And so um, I, this, and he reminded me a few weeks ago when we were ha- the sh- there was a lot of shootings going on, still ongoing, but the one that happened in Florida. And so there was um, a uh, you know a forum that he did in Washington, and some of the families came up and they were talking and everything. And so I was on social media and I saw this meme or this thing. If the um, team can help me, um, yeah. And. You know, they kind of got him listening to the kids and the parents, and then they put, a, um, you know, that up close little something on, you know, where he has his notes on there. I was like, see, this dude don't even know how to talk to people. He, the people got to write notes, like, I hear you. Who has to tell you to say, I hear you? You know, I'm right, really upset with him for a moment. And, but then something happened, like my heart warmed up a little bit. I was like, wait, what? And, I, and that compassion overshadow me for him. It was not me, but my heart went out to him for several reasons, and the weight of his assignment burdened me down. And the Lord said, you can't hardly listen to your two children when you get off work and they get off the bus. (laughs) 
you need to write some notes. Tell me, I hear you. <laughs> what happened in school today? They, and my kids are like, Mom, did you hear what I said? Yeah. He said, but this man carries the weight of this country on him, whether he intended to or not. That's a weight, and you are a kingdom citizen. You need to pray for him. <laughs> I kind of feel like Jacob. I'm still wrestling with the angel, but I've learned to pray for this man. Um, Y'all can take that down, because that's just a little bit much. <laughs> but I'm just saying, I mean, so that leads me to my third point. Forgiveness covers. It does not expose. It does not expose. So the Lord told me you got to stop retweeting the little memes and stuff. You know, if you see some, if you follow me on social media, I put 45. Just know that the Lord is still working on me. And we gonna, but we praying. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put the hand emoji, the prayer emoji next to it. No, seriously. But he needs prayer. His wife. And his children need to be covered. We need to be covered. Need to be covered. But forgiveness covers. Um, we passed, started, jumped off from this last week. First Peter four and eight. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sin. And the Lord said, so He said, Sharon, you. He, he, the Bible says, <laughs> you know, you're supposed to, you're supposed to, you know, forgive them. You know, 70 times seven. I said, Lord, I started counting. <laughs> so well, if, well, how much is that? Because if it's 490, then I can just, he already been in a year. So that's 365, 490 minus 365. Then I, I only got a little bit more time to forgive him, Lord. Because <laughs> he do something every day. No, <laughs> no, Lord, no, forgive. Forgive so much that you forget what they did. Forgive so much that you forget what they said. You give them brand new mercy every single day. That person, that coworker on your job that got something to say, er day. <laughs> this side right here got it. Er day. Er day. Forgive. They're just being who they are. And the Lord said, Lord said, has talk back to Trump. Lord said, has he changed? I said, no. He said, well, why are you surprised by what he says every day? Why? Why does that surprise you? You know in advance to forgive. So that leads me to my final point. We, we were talking about Jesus in the Passover. We were talking about Palm Sunday is the beginning of Passover. And, and so it's the eve of Passover. And that is when everybody comes every year. And so we talked about Jesus as the first recorded, you know, attendance, you know, when he's 12 and then, but we, what we need to talk about in terms of Passover is where it kind of originated from. And if you read in scripture and, and over in Exodus, it talks about how God is getting ready to deliver the children of Israel, right, out of the hands of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh is a stubborn cat. So the Lord just then locusts and turn the, the Nile into blood and all that stuff. And he, like, let my people go. And, and, and Pharaoh's not doing it. He's tough. You know what I mean? Like, really? I mean... I mean, I need water. What? You want your people? Great. You're gonna, can I have my water back, Lord? Yes. Okay, great. They can go. But that wasn't Pharaoh. Pharaoh was, he was like, you know, determined. So God, and this is, listen, listen to me. That's why you never have to get your enemies back. The Bible says, pray for them that despitefully misuse you. Pray, why? Because you don't, you, you go, by the time God gets done with them, you be like, well, God, you may have to do them like that. I mean, if I had took matters into my own hands, it might have, you know, been a little close, and I would be in jail. But Lord, Lord, toes falling off, and they lost the car and the job. God, you, you, you don't. You never have to get in God's way. So God gets ready to deal with Pharaoh, and He goes to the children uh, 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 of Israel. And he says, Listen, I'm gonna need y'all to get some blood. Kill and sacrifice these animals. And I want you to paint the door posts in blood. 
He said, because I'm sending, I'm sending my angel, and he coming to tear up stuff. He killing everything. The firstborn child, firstborn animals, is dying. And so what you need to do is make sure that you and the family are under the blood. So listen, so the Passover is a celebration of a mighty deliverance as a result of the blood. And I, I was thinking through this, and the Lord said to me, he said, girl, listen, he said, it's, he said, I shed the blood, but it's your job to apply it. Woo, Lord, that's powerful to me. He said, I died for them, but you got to go and make sure that they get in the house under the blood. He said, and the way that you do that is forgiveness.